Welcome to the Death of the Author podcast, episode 13, your world this week in the YA universe and general geekery. You're here with Alexandra, a fictionado of everything nerdy and obscure, and Chelsea, me, writer of many unfinished things and general story connoisseur. So, it has been a while since we last podcast. Life has been getting in the way, as per usual. It's okay, it's been getting in the way in a good way. We have been super busy. Running around, doing things, and of course, our thing that we must mention every podcast is coming up, <laughs> and I won't even mention it by name so that you know what it is. Coming up very soon. One month. One month! Okay. I'm so excited. We saw the schedule, it was finally posted for all the panels, and just everything, 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 everything. So exciting! And we had a pretty big weekend last weekend, too. We went to Ad Astra in Toronto. A, a con in our hometown. Literally in our hometown, not just, like, in the neighborhood. What the hell, man? It was, it was an adventure. It was pretty cool. There was a lot of book-related stuff, a lot of book-related panels. They had this amazing showroom with just books, and I got to chat with some people from different publishing houses, which was a lot of fun. Um, we saw Kelly Armstrong. She currently has a book in the YA section. Just ran into some other authors who I can't even remember their name anymore. But uh, We saw Anne Bishop, too. You saw. I saw Anne Bishop. Who else? We, we saw a couple podcasters. We went to a few different panels, some on podcasting, some on writing. My favorite panel we went to was this kind of mythology, uh, modern versus retro versus old mythology, and it was a lot of fun, and uh, the panels were so cool because they were so laid back, <laughs> Yeah, I love that. They're just like, hey, anybody want to moderate for us? Moderate or anything? And um, we, we totally heard about this one book that we're going to need to check out. I can't remember the author's name, but he described it as it was about Apollo... Dionysus. Dionysus opening a bar on Toronto Island, <laughs> which just, just... I need this in my life, like, right now. It sounds absolutely perfect. And so we're going to have to find that and read it, because what else do we have to do with our lives? And we watched The Masquerade, which was cool. There were some pretty cool costumes. Mm -hmm. And we went to the dance, which was amazing. <laughs> mainly because of one thing one thing only alexandra okay so first <laughs> of all she saw somebody cosplaying as her favorite character who in every hipster way she says like you've probably never heard of him um <laughs> and that is johannes cabal by jonathan l howard and she saw somebody cosplaying as him and she was so excited and like why don't you go talk to him and, and i didn't because i didn't <laughs> Well, anyways, so this uh, Johannes Cabal cosplayer was at the dance. And now the character, Johannes Cabal, is a very stiff, very proper. He tries, tries to, like, tamp down all his emotions, but just fails. And uh, very sarcastic. And he would not be one to dance. But the person who was cosplaying as Johannes Cabal broke it down on the dance floor <laughs> in ways that... I cannot even describe to you. I saw this character pat his head and rub his tummy. <laughs> it was amazing. We were we would be dancing and we'd look across and he'd just be like breaking it down and we would stop and just admire just because when I say breaking it down, I'm I'm saying picture a Broadway musical yeah. star at a dance just doing whatever the hell he wanted. Props to that guy. He definitely w made our night. Like, that was, <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, my gosh. So, that was our adventure into the literary convention world. Mm -hmm. We will definitely be going back I next think so. year. So. And today we actually went on an adventure. We went to our local bookstore just to kill some time. And I found... The most wonderful book I've ever found in my life. Like, and they say don't judge a book by the cover. Some people are like, oh, turn to page 99 and read the first sentence if it's interesting. The book's probably interesting. Well, I opened this book up to the flap, where there was probably one of the 
best sentences that I have ever come across ever. And that was, everything was all right until the massacre happened. And I was just like, <laughs> wait, what? What is this? And it, the book actually is Crown for Cold Silver by Alex Marshall. <laughs> so she's been trying very hard not to ruin the book for herself by like skimming through it, trying to find good lines. <laughs> Um, but she did manage to find one that was just made us both die as I was driving about dogs and how uh, enemies are worse than dogs and oh my gosh. And I'm totally down to read this book because it's about a female general, which you, you, you don't come across that a lot. That's like, it is a fantasy book that is built to have five villains and they're all five villains going at, going at each other for different reasons. And that massacre line is actually the first line in the book. Like, that first line was so good, they had to put it on the flap. <laughs> and I bought that book on first line alone. I did. I, I have paid. a feeling the publisher did, too. They just yeah. read that first line and were like, okay, guy needs a publishing deal. But the thing we found out, discovered, is that Alex Marshall is actually a pseudonym for another famous author who we have no idea who he is. There is nothing out there on who he is other than he has written books in multiple genres. And that, yeah, he's a prolific writer. So, we really, really, really want to know who this guy is. Mainly just so that we can go buy more of his books and see what else he's done. Yeah. Alright, so because my record keeping, apparently for the end of April, is a little fell off the map. I don't know how, because I went through everything that I could find. But So the only book that I could find back in, I guess, January when I was doing this, that is coming out in the next little while, is one called uh, Sophomore Years Greek to Me by Meredith Zetlin. And that is coming out April 21st. All right, here we go. Going into this blind as per usual. High school sophomore Zona Lowell has lived in New York her whole life and plans to follow in the footsteps of her renowned journalist father. But when he announces they're moving to Athens for six months so he can work on an important new story, she's devastated. He must have ulterior motives. See, when Zona's mother married an American, her huge Greek family cut off contact, but Zona never knew her mom. And now she's supposed to uproot her entire life and meet possibly hostile relatives on their turf. Thanks, but no thanks. In the vein of Anna and the French Kiss, Zona navigates a series of hilarious escapades, eye-opening revelations, and unexpected reunions in a foreign country, all while documenting the trip through one-of-a-kind commentary. Could be fun. Yeah. Sounds kind of like a sweet little beach read slash, hey, it's spring, let's talk about love. Can I read? Love. True love. Brings us together. And also brings us to our topic for this week. I don't understand this segue, but okay, so our topic for this week is... Memoirs! Yay! I have gone through such a memoir kick for the last few months. It's ridiculous. She's just been listing off all these memoirs she's been reading to me, and I'm like, what, what, what happened to you? Are you, do you? I don't normally like reading nonfiction. I, I don't know why. It's just never really been my thing, and... I started in December, I read the David Cronenberg memoir, and then I just kind of fell into a hole of memoirs. A black, black hole. Okay, list them all off for me. Okay, so Cronenberg, Carrie Fisher's uh, Wishful Drinking, Simon Pegg's Nerd Do Well, Kevin Smith, Top Shit, Amy Poehler's uh, Yes Please. That's my other big one. So, um, also, as you wish. Oh like yes, Carrie and Ann. as you wish. See, like there's Curry the sale. There, there's the segue. I get the segue now. <laughs> okay, so it's been a wild ride of mostly film people from my memoirs. I've been reading *The Birth of the Pill* by I can't remember the author. I'm still reading it. Kind of pop into it every once in a while. It's been super, super fascinating. I don't know why I like actor memoirs. Like, the funniest one I read was Carrie Fisher's. Carrie Fisher's Wishful Drinking is great. But if you want some serious motivation to do things, pick up Tough Shit by Kevin Smith. Because, oh my god, that was intense. The self-deprecating humor. Not even that, like, he had... I ended up writing a section of this book out in my notebook. Which you made me read. And Which I made Chelsea read. You're totally right. 
Okay, let's find it. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's fairly long, but Kevin Smith is basically talking about doing what you want to do. And he's like, but nobody else can believe in you if you don't believe in what you're doing. I've willed almost all the stuff I've done into existence. And if I can do that, anybody can do that. So start your chatter. Talk about what you're going to do. Plant seeds early and take as much time as it requires to will your goals into existence. Don't wait for God or Zeus to move around the chessboard. God is busy and Zeus is doing movies now. So take control of the game yourself. Expect moments of discouragement, just don't wallow in them. When shit gets tough, and it will, simply tell yourself, if an asshat like fat Kevin Smith can succeed, then what the fuck is stopping me from doing the same? And then of course he goes on to, the only guy I have ever heard of who got an amazing life literally handed to him was Hal Jordan. Don't wait for a dying alien to give you a magic ring. Just do it yourself, Slappy. We can't all be Superman, but we can sure as shit train hard, and with loads of practice, we can be Batman. And who the fuck doesn't want to be Batman? Batman has impeccable moral compass, he's clever and mysterious, and when fucktards get sassy, he punches them in the face. Oh, uh, yeah, that sounds like so much fun. And I will definitely pick that one up. I just really felt like I needed to go do something important after <laughs> <laughs> I must be productive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are you getting out of all these memoirs? The ones I really, really like are about, like, the laymen who, like, get, like, you know, their dreams. Like, Simon Pegg, who was, like, such a Star Wars nerd and, you know, such a big nerd. And then finally just, like, made it into acting and doing everything. And just, like, to the point where he's talking about how if he would had a time machine to go back and tell, like, young him that he would be on the set of Star Trek talking to Leonard Nimoy as Spock. How do you <laughs> react to that? Like, he's living, like, his his total dream. <laughs> and I'll, okay, the other one I forgot to mention was I, I read Leonard Nimoy's I Am Spock, which was kind of heartbreaking to read after his recent demise. demise. Yeah, yeah. He was probably, his, that was probably the most genuine out of all of them that I read. Oh. Yeah, it was, it was, it was sweet. All the stuff he did, because, of course, he's known mostly for being Spock on Star Trek. But did you know he was a director and he directed a bunch of movies? I did not know that. He directed Three Men and a Baby. Ha! Ha ha ha! Wow, that's amazing. He did a, he, he was on stage, he... He, he did a lot of stuff oh, okay. that nobody really acknowledges because, you know... He was Spock. He was Spock. And that's it. But, I mean, at least he had the opportunity to do that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So you're getting inspiration out of this. Yes, I'm getting inspiration. I want to go out and be the best that I can be. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Why? What, what are you getting out of, like, the one memoir that you read? <laughs> um... I'm getting this weird look into the past on something that I guess we take for granted these days. Like, just how something like this could come to be. Like, and how much it changed how we look at, like, women's roles and sexuality. And just how much people don't see these days. Because, you know, it totally bugs me when you're online you're like, oh, feminism is this. And feminism is women hating. And, fem or, sorry, feminism is men hating. And... And blah, 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 blah. And then you go back and you kind of look at, like, the early feminists and you're like, where did people get this? <laughs> this this absolute garbage. And, I mean, there are always extremists and there are always going to be extremists in anything that is trying to change society. But the fact that we so easily boil down feminism to this little thing... Um, uh, or anything really. It's it's just frustrating. So I'm kind of getting this like really cool like nostalgic um, setting for like the '50s and and learning like a different angle on on uh, life. So uh, we're learning things. Yeah, it makes you feel smart. It really does. And yeah, you kind of look at the world a little differently. And you're like, okay, this is how this person did this. This is how this person affected some kind of change in the world, or at least their lives. And maybe I can do it too. I don't know. So, 
What's next on your memoir reading? I have, as I mentioned, the Christopher Lee autobiography memoir, which I'm really, really excited for because that guy was and still is crazy. The stuff that he did, crazy. I also have um, Ellen DeGeneres' memoir that I'm really pumped to read and Tina Fey's memoir. Oh, God, you love her, don't you? I love Tina Fey, so... There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, next on my memoir reading, probably Kevin Smith. Sounds absolutely wonderful. I can't think of a memoir that I really am totally looking forward to, though, other than that. Um, I think it would just have to peruse the memoir section and find something. You should read the Cronenberg one. That's fascinating. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know. I think I just finished Consumed, and I'm going to need a break. <laughs> So yeah, on the topic of reading, what are you reading right now that is not memoir related? Okay, right now I just picked up Red Sea and or Red Skies by Scott Lynch. I read The Lies of Locke Lamore, absolutely adored it beyond all measure. I can't believe that this came into the world so just absolutely fully formed and perfect. And so I'm totally looking forward to the second one. Um, I'm only like maybe like a hundred pages in, but it's promising to be just as amazing as the first one, because all the consequences of what they did in the first one are just <laughs> not letting them go. And uh, what else? I finished Consumed by David Cronenberg, which was a ride, <laughs> an experience. Yes, yes, you learned things. I did, and you learned things about yourself. No. <laughs> I learned things about North Korea. (laughs) Maybe. I don't know. That book just did not go where I thought it was going. I also recently finished Serafina and Shadow Scale by Rachel Hartman, and that was absolutely gorgeous. So much fun. So well thought out, especially world building wise. You just you just want to cry a little bit. (laughs) And um you just love like the main character and just the way the story goes, but it doesn't take you where you thought you were going. So wonderful. I started A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schweib. And oh my god, this book is making my life. It's beautiful. I love it. I would marry this book if I could. <laughs> <laughs> really? Just marry, huh? Just marry. Um, I also finished recently, by recently, I mean a couple days ago, um, The Walls Around Us. And I'm blanking on the author's name but it is also really, really beautifully written. And it is a young adult kind of ballerina ghost story. It sounds totally weird. It was so worth it. Like, I was just blown away with how good this book was. It got a five out of five ratings for me on Goodreads. Which never happens. Yeah. So, yeah, we are totally looking forward to the next few weeks. I'm sure you will hear from us more often than apparently you have. But it has been a good few weeks. So if you have um, any autobiographies that uh, or memoirs that you think we should definitely read, pass them over. Apparently we're on a kick. All right, so you can find us on the internet at www.dmba.com, on YouTube at YouTube slash DMBA Reviews. Uh, we are also on Twitter. Though uh, I think Twitter season is coming back for us now that nice weather is here. So at Twitter, we're on Twitter, we're at D of the A Reviews and at Zeris underscore Loki. So you'll be hearing from us in a couple of weeks. Till then, keep reading. Look both ways before you cross the street. I don't know how I'm supposed to sign up. Bye, guys. Bye.